Shalom Aleichem, welcome to Breast of Web Seminar. The week is Pasha's Michet, 2016, or Tav Shinai and Zion. And um, it's also Hanukkah, the week of Hanukkah. All right? We eat latkes, we light candles, um, we celebrate, and um, it becomes family gatherings. And a lot of things happen on Hanukkah. I often wonder what Hanukkah, the Rebbe says in Lesson 2 in the Kuta Moran, that the days of Hanukkah are days of uh, joy and happiness. Days of Hanukkah are days of praise of Hashem. As we say in the Shemun Esrei and al when we hear that piece in for Hanukkah, it says, the Kovu Shmoinas Yeme Chanuka Elu Lahoidois Ulahalel the Shimcha Hagodo that they established these eight days of Chanuka in order to be able to praise Hashem. If you know the story, you know that the um, Greeks, Alexander of Macedonia, he uh, conquered the Persians. He was a warlord a bloodthirsty king. He died young. and uh, But he taught war, not peace, to his people. The Greeks picked up on it. And they joined together with the Egyptians. So the Egyptian kings and the Greek leaders became oppressors, trying to conquer whatever they could in the whole Middle East. Eventually, they got very powerful and they uh, conquered the land of Israel. The Jews returned some 150 years prior to the Greek conquest of Israel. The Jews returned from Babylon, from Persia, and they rebuilt the temple and they were living a Jewish life. Then we have the Pirkei Yavos tells us that there were the members of the Great Assembly, then there was Shimon HaTzadik, then Antignus Yisoychoi, and so on. They were leaders, Yosef ben Yoezer and Yosef ben Yochanan. They were the ones who were the leaders of the Jewish nation during the Hanukkah oppression. The Greeks tried to destroy the Torah civilization. We spoke about it in last week's Pasha, Mikates. Civilization. These are the great civilized people of the world, the Greeks, who introduced the Olympics, who introduced the physical pleasures, and who introduced philosophy, which goes nowhere, into the world. This is the civilization. And they took over the land of Israel, and they took over the Jewish mind and the Hellenists from among the Greeks tried to divert the Jews from their real calling which is serving God and um, it was horrific the Medrash says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the beginning of Genesis the beginning of Bracious and the world was desolate. The darkness, the Medrus says, represents the Greek exile. It's the Greek exile that's called darkness. It was such dark days for the Jewish nation. They said, no more learning Torah. They said, no more eating kosher. No more keeping Shabbos. No more circumcision. They were so oppressive, they would take off the doors the front doors, nobody was allowed to close their front door. They had to have the doors open so that uh, there would be no security, right? Security is a big thing today. You come into your home, you lock your front door, you feel safe. The Jews were not allowed any security. 20 years, the Greeks took their oppression and suppressed the Jewish nation. You can't keep Torah, you can't keep to your, you have to join 
the Hellenistic civilization. That was the idea behind the Greek exile. Rabbi Nachman points out that exile is not really a state. The word exile in dictionary means that you're taken away from your place. Rabbi Nachman points out that it's not really taken away from your place. Exile is basically a state of mind. And we know this from the Greek oppression because the Babylonian and Persian and Edomite exiles, the one that we're in now is the Edomite, they all forced the Jews out of the land of Israel, out of their land. But the Greek oppression, the Greek exile took place in Israel. So a person could be in his place, but if his mind is not where it's supposed to be, then he's in exile too. That is the exile of Hanukkah, the exile of our not being in our place, not knowing what the right thing to do is. Everyone thinks they know the right thing, but do we really? Are we really doing the right thing for ourselves? Are we really bringing ourselves forth to our potential? Are we really developing our potential? Are we really who we really should be? A nation of honest, integral people, a nation that leads others in the right path, or are we out all looking for our self-interest? And that's what happened during the Greek exile, during Hanukkah. A lot of the Jews went off to Derech. They followed the Hellenists. They followed the local ideas. I was uh, in Toronto recently. And I spoke to a group of ladies, and one of them started with me, Women's Lib, or Women's... Uh, equality, and, and I said to her, listen, I'm not an apologist for Torah. I'm not going to try and tell you uh, the Torah. Well, this is the way we understand it today. I said, those things belong in what you call civilization. It's not what we call in a world that is uh, given to us direction by the Torah, through the Torah, right? Men and women are not equal, and they are very equal. They are, right? They were created equal. Zohar unekeva biroam. In the first chapter of Bereshus, it says that man was created male and female. And on the levels that are discussed in the Kabbalah, Abba and Ima, certain letters, levels of father and mother or family, are equal, right? In the younger row, you see the uh, boys and girls, whatever. The idea is to develop so that they become equal. So that they become equal. I said, but the way civilization presents the equality is not the way the Torah realizes it. Because men and women are very, very different. And you cannot, this idea, I remember when Women's Lib started, they had Bella Abzug and Gloria Steinem, two nice Jewish girls, may Hashem spare us all, who started this whole uh, feminist movement and whatnot. And um, look at all the single mothers that we have today. Look at the way the family structure, there is no family structure anymore. What happened? This is all part of the Greek exile. It's all part of the exile that we're in now that we're still following through. Western civilization, after all, most of it is built upon the Greek philosophies and ideas of civilization that they had years ago, thousands of years ago, whatever. So what's with Hanukkah? What does Hanukkah represent? Hanukkah represents people who wanted the truth, Matis Yoho and his children, and they couldn't get it. They couldn't get it because the Greeks were oppressing them. The Greeks went and defiled the Jewish temple, right? They defiled it, and as the commentaries explain, the temple represents the person's mind. They defiled the mind. And people were willing to accept the other teachings of what they called civilization, the Hellenists, the philosophies, and the, 
the physical pleasures that the Greeks pursued and whatnot. And they had many gods. This one is the god of lightning, this one is the god of thunder, this one is the god of, of uh, strength, and uh, whatever. Right? Everyone re- worships a different kind of sport. Right? Sports. They have all these different strength, different peoples, and this one is lightning, and let's go with the race cars, and let's go with the thunder and the noise and the entertainment and the music, and let's go with everything. There's different gods for everything. And this one follows music, and this one will follow a different industry. And of course, there's the uh, exile, the god of money, right? The almighty dollar and whatnot. Those are all the different gods, the Greek gods that we have today in our civilization. Matisio and his children were a few, a handful of people. And yet they said, we can no longer exist this way. We have to go out and fight for our rights too. Everyone is fighting for their rights. Everyone, this one has rights, that one has rights. Recently in the States, they have a new thing called Black Lives Matter. There are cops shooting black people. There are black people shooting cops. Black Lives Matter. I guess the cops don't matter. I don't know how to deal with it. But, uh, you know, everyone has their rights. We, as Jews, have rights too. We have rights to come recognize Hashem Recognize the power of Torah. After all, think about it. Torah has been with us over 3,000 years, some 3,300 years, since Moshe Rabbeinu brought the Torah down to us. Right? That's pretty long. It's the only civilization that really has lasted the last 3,500 years. It's the only civilization. Right? Every nation has changed, even the Chinese who were like behind their great wall for who knows how many years, and they were a long-lasting monarchy, a long-lasting dynasty. But even they cracked, and they changed. The Torah has not changed. The Torah is the way it was when it was given. The Torah is the same the way it is today. That's what Matis Yoho and his children realized, and they recognized that the Torah is eternal. And we have to live for eternity, not just for a temporal living, 70 years, 80 years, go through life, get a lot of money, be physically strong, let's run every day, let's go to these uh, Jack LaLanne uh, you know, muscle building places, let's eat Weight Watchers food, that's very healthy, let's eat this, let's work with this, let's do this. All of that doesn't last. It keeps on changing. It keeps on changing. The Torah remains the same. And if we merit to grab onto the Torah and follow it, then we will be able to have an eternal life even in this world because we'll be living with eternal uh, civilization. We'll be living with eternal thoughts. We'll be living with eternal ideas not with temporal ideas. We don't have to change every day, even though every day we change. Every day we wake up, it's a different day. But the thoughts, the underlying thought of my life is living for eternity. And therefore, I can have a good life because I can live a life of Torah. So it came along Hanukkah, came along Matis Yoho and his children, the Maccabees, and they fought. They fought for what they thought was right. The fact is, they were right. They defeated the Greeks. These were the mighty Greek armies that defeated and conquered the entire Middle East. And they rode around on elephants, right? They rode around on elephants, war elephants. And they conquered them with their feelings, Mi Hashem Eli, who is to Hashem with me? Let him come with me. Maccabi, the word Maccabi, it comprises the first letters of the words Mi Chomocha Bo'elim Hashem Who among all the gods is like you Hashem They're all gods It's this sport, it's this entertainment It's this music star Whatever it may be This is a president This is a star politician This is a star businessman Whatever it may be But there is a god There is a God, there is Hashem, He's with us all the time. 
And if we make ourselves with him, we will overcome. We will make it right. And so the Maccabees went out and did battle. And that's the lesson for us Hanukkah too. How did they do battle? They united. They united. Like last week's Parsha. This week's Parsha. Miketz. The brothers united in their search for the Tzaddik. In their search for Hashem. The brothers united in order to be able to do the right thing. In order to come close to Hashem. And that is the message of why Hanukkah always falls out with Miketz. Miketz always falls out with Hanukkah. Right? And the reason for it is that we have to learn to unite. That's really the underlying problem of exile. We're in exile. We all have our own ideas. We all think this is right, that is right, the other thing is right. This is, everyone has a, uh, a charge that they want to make happen. They have an idea, a goal. If they have that, well, we can't get together because everyone stands on their own principles. But if I stand on principles that are eternal, there is a God. Somehow we have to find Him. We. We all have a different approach. So how could you find Him? You're not united? No. We're united because we know the end goal is God, is Hashem is fulfilling the life that Hashem wants us to live. And if we do that, then we'll really feel what Hanukkah is all about. We'll be able to light the candles with joy, bring light into the darkness, which is the Greek exile, and to be able to say, Hashem Echod, God is one, and we will serve Him, and Beza Hashem will all come out to doing the right thing. Amen vi Amen. Have a wonderful Hanukkah. And enjoy it, and let's all get out of this exile. It's enough time already. Hashem, we should all say, it's enough. Let's all go out together from Golas. Amen.